In this video, we're going to go over reactions associated with alcohols. So what's going to happen if we react an alcohol with hydrobromic acid? The OH group will be replaced with a bromine atom. So that's going to be the end result. And so basically, the alcohol is converted into an alcohol halide. But now let's go over the mechanism for this reaction. Now we have a primary alcohol. And so the mechanism will go through an SN2 reaction. But the first step in this reaction will be protonation of the OH group. The OH group is a bad leaving group. But once you add a hydrogen to it, it becomes a good leaving group. So the oxygen is going to acquire a hydrogen turning into this species. And so whenever the oxygen has a positive charge, it becomes a better leaving group. In the second step, the bromide ion, which is now in the solution, will attack from the back in an SN2 reaction, expelling H2O. And so that's how we can get our alcohol halide. So that's the mechanism for the conversion of a primary alcohol into an alcohol halide. Primary alcohols react very slowly with hydrochloric acid due to the fact that chloride is a weaker nucleophile than bromide. However, this reaction can be enhanced if we use zinc chloride, which is a powerful Lewis acid. And so this is known as the Lucas reagent. So this oxygen is going to attack zinc chloride. But I need to draw this better. So I'm going to draw zinc chloride like this. So the oxygen attacks zinc, and it's going to expel a chloride ion. And so we're going to have an oxygen that's attached to a hydrogen and the zinc species. So right now, the oxygen has a positive charge, which means it's a good leaving group. So in the second step, the chloride ion comes in, it attacks the carbon, kicks out the oxygen. And so that's how we can get our alkyl halide. So if you want to convert an alcohol into an alkyl chloride, where you have a primary alcohol, you want to use the Lucas reagent to do so. Now let's work on some more examples. Let's say we have a tertiary alcohol. And this time, let's react it with hydroiodic acid. What is the major product in this reaction? The end result is that we're going to replace the OH group with the iodine atom. And so that's going to be the end result. But let's propose a mechanism. So because we have a tertiary alcohol, this reaction will proceed by the SM1 mechanism. But the first step is protonation. we need to convert the hydroxyl group into a good leaving group. So now, because it's an SN1 reaction, the iodide ion is not going to come in and attack this carbon. That's going to be an SN2 reaction. Those methyl groups will prevent access to this carbon. So what's going to happen instead is the leaving group is going to leave, giving us a tertiary carbocation intermediate. And then at this point, that's when the iodide ion can come in and combine with the carbocation, giving us an alcohol halide. And so this is the product of the reaction. Now let's go ahead and work on another example. So let's react this alcohol. This is a 2-methylcyclohexanol. Let's react it with hydrobromic acid. So go ahead and predict the major product of the reaction and also show a mechanism as well. So the first step is protonation, as always, anytime you react an alcohol with an acid. So now we have a good leaving group.
So what's going to happen is the leaving group is going to leave. And once it leaves, we're going to have a secondary carbocation. But notice that the secondary carbocation is next to a tertiary carbon. And so when you see that, a hydride shift will occur. And so this is going to give us a more stable tertiary carbocation intermediate. And then at this point, the bromide ion will attack the carbocation. And so this is going to be the final answer. So we have a tertiary alcohol halide. And that's it. Now, there are other ways in which we can convert alcohols into alkyl halides. One reagent that we could use is PBr3. And this works through an SN2 mechanism, converting the OH group into or replacing them for bromine atom. And so this produces an alkyl bromide. Another example is using SOCl2, which also works through an SN2 mechanism. But this time, the OH group is replaced with a Cl. Now, let's go over the mechanism for those two reactions. Let's begin by drawing one butanol. And then PBr3 looks like this. This is phosphorus tribromide. The phosphorus atom has a lone pair. Now, Phosphorus is partially positive. The reason for that is bromine is more electronegative than phosphorus. So bromine is partially negative. Now the oxygen in the alcohol also has a partial negative charge. So therefore it's attracted to the partially positive phosphorus atom. So oxygen is going to behave as a nucleophile attacking the phosphorus atom, causing one of the bromine atoms to be expelled. And so we're going to get an intermediate that looks like this. Now whenever oxygen has three bonds, it's going to have one lone pair and a positive charge. Now if you recall, Protonated alcohols are highly acidic. Whenever you have an oxygen with three bonds and a hydrogen on it, that hydrogen is going to be highly acidic. So what's going to happen next is an acid-base reaction. So we're going to use the solvent pyridine to remove a hydrogen. Pyridine is a weak base. So pyridine is going to abstract a proton, putting these two electrons back on the oxygen. So this is what we have right now. Now in the final step, a bromide ion is going to attack this carbon, expelling this group. And so we're going to get one bromobutane as our product and then this will be a side product which we can leave it like this. So that's the mechanism for the reaction of an alcohol with PBr3. This last step here is an SN2 step where we get inversion at the carbon atom. Now let's go over the mechanism of the other reaction. So let's start with our primary alcohol halide and let's react it with thionyl chloride, which looks like this. It has a sulfur atom, an oxygen, two chlorine atoms, and a lone pair. Now the oxygen and the chlorine atoms are more electronegative than sulfur, so the sulfur atom has a partial positive charge, just like the phosphorus atom. Now the oxygen is going to attack the sulfur, causing this pi bond to break. And so we're going to get this intermediate. So now the oxygen has a positive charge. 
And in the next step, the oxygen is going to use one of its lone pairs to reform the pi bond, expelling a chlorine atom. So this is what we now have. What do you think is going to happen next? Now typically, this reaction is carried out in pyridine. And pyridine is a weak base, which looks like this. And the purpose of pyridine in this example is to get rid of the hydrogen. In the last step, the chloride ion attacks from the back and then break in the carbon-oxygen bond. Those electrons will be used to form a pi bond between the sulfur and the oxygen atom, and this will expel the chloride ion. And so we're going to get this product. So this will give us our alkyl chloride. We're also going to get sulfur dioxide, which looks like this. The sulfur has a lone pair on it so it causes the molecule to have a bent shape and we have this other chloride ion and also pyridine has a hydrogen on it and so that's how you can show the mechanism for the conversion of an alcohol into an alkyl chloride using SOCl2 in pyridine now we need to discuss the stereochemistry of these reactions so let's say we have this particular alcohol, 2-butanol, and let's react it with hydrobromic acid. What's going to happen? So you need to know that this will occur by means of an SN1 mechanism, since we have a secondary alcohol. If we had a primary alcohol, then it would be an SN2 reaction. But secondary and tertiary alcohols react with HBr by means of an SN1 mechanism. And so we're going to get a racemic mixture of products. So the bromine atom, it could be on the dash, or it can be on the wedge. But the key is we can get both stereoisomers in this example. Now let's say if we started with the same alcohol, but this time, instead of using HBr, we chose to use PBr3. What's going to happen now? This reaction proceeds by an SN2 mechanism, and so we're going to have an inversion at the configuration or at this uh, chiral center. So we're going to have inversion of configuration, and the bromine atom is going to be on the wedge as opposed to on the dash. So we only get one of the two stereoisomers in this case. Now, if we use SOCl2, something similar is going to happen. So if we use thionyl chloride, it's going to go through an SN2 reaction. And so we're going to have an inversion at the chiral center. But we're going to get a chlorine atom instead of a bromine atom. So you need to be familiar with the stereochemistry of these reactions. Another one you need to know is TSCl in case you see it on our test. Now this one it works through retention but it converts the OH into a good leaving group. And the product that you get is OTS which I'm going to talk about soon. So here we have an alcohol and let's put the OH group in the front attached to some R group and then we have this compound which is para toluene chloride, abbreviated TSCl and so to draw the product of this reaction all you need to do is remove hydrochloric acid and simply connect 
these two groups together. And as you can see, you're going to get retention at the oxygen. So the stereochemistry doesn't change. Now for those of you who need the mechanism, here's how you can show it. Oh, by the way, so this is TSCL at the top, and this compound is known as R-OTS. So we have an OTS group attached to the R group.